Hey, hey everyone. So back again today, you know, this is just the regular Saturday early morning episode, but I decided to film it just because the uh, episode is going to be short. So I don't have to worry about taking up too much, uh, you know, data space in my whole. Yeah. So today I'm going to be covering uh, Gilles Deleuze's postscript on the societies of control in which he tries to demonstrate a transformation from the way that Foucault characterizes disciplinary societies to what he calls societies of control, control societies. Before jumping into it, if you want to follow me, you can do that on Instagram at theory underscore and underscore philosophy. If you want to mostly see pictures of my cats, that is. Uh, if you want to help me out, you can like, share, subscribe. If you're listening to this in podcast form, leave a good review or a bad one, whatever you think, whatever you think I deserve. Um, you can help me out monetarily if you want via the links below. If you're listening to this in podcast form, you can find the video on YouTube. If you're listening to this on YouTube, you can find it on podcasts where there shouldn't be any ads. And yeah, so let's just jump right into it. So I, I'll be straight up about this. I don't think that this text is very profound, um, which is obviously not a good thing to say. But I think that Foucault, in his work on discipline, accounts for a lot of what Deleuze says here to be like original ideas in terms of the regulation and control over bodies. Now, with that being said, there, there are some novel insights here that are worth mentioning, but it's not quite as novel as I think some people make it out to seem, at least according to me. Now, if you want more on that, you know, you can go and check out my episodes on Discipline and Punish, in which I expound upon that book quite, quite a bit, and I think give a pretty clear explanation as to what's going on. And you'll see that some of the things that Deleuze lays out here as being new, as belonging to what he calls, and I will explain, these societies of control, could actually be seen in how Foucault is describing disciplinary societies. So just putting that out there. So Deleuze starts out here by kind of recapping what Foucault was saying. So in Foucault, for Deleuze, and I, I find it problematic the way that he characterizes Foucault's work here, but it, Deleuze knew Foucault personally and probably has a better understand, definitely had a better understanding than I will ever have, but still I'm going to problematize it a little bit. But this is what Deleuze says. He says that within Foucault, there are these very clear sites of power and they are sites of enclosure. So the big examples that we could think of are like the family, the school, the barracks, the hospital, the prison. All of these sites are sites of enclosure that close people within them and restrict a kind of movement, that restrict a kind of potential by virtue of them being sites of enclosure. Now, this doesn't mean that people were um, foreclosed opportunity. In fact, one of the markers of the disciplinary society within Foucault and that Deleuze picks up on is that these sites promoted a kind of individualism. That is, they promoted what Foucault says calls a kind of uh, productive function. They allowed people to become, to change, to transform, to be uh, beings within it. And that's what made uh, these forms of control all that more pernicious because they appeared to be quite liberating almost. They, they seem to afford potential. Now Deleuze says that these sites were under constant reform and they seem to be on the brink of collapse almost, having to give way to new forms of control to meet certain new needs. And he's going to relate it to uh, certain economic needs like the transformation of the, the economy from a kind of um, you know more stable working one to like a gig economy is just being one example. But I just want to meditate on this idea of Foucault first, that is the ideas of enclosure. And Foucault doesn't say that these sites are the only places that power works. He just uses them as an example to then extrapolate to the rest of society. He uses these examples as being like almost for the reader to, be, to just demonstrate in the simplest terms how society works at large. So Foucault doesn't think that the panopticon is restricted to the prison. Foucault thinks that the panopticon is everywhere and we are always under its kind of uh, surveying mechanism. 
and we turn that onto ourselves so that we regulate ourselves. We regulate ourselves to be more productive in the real world. So it's not like we're only concentrated within these enclosed spaces as Deleuze seems to kind of lay out, or we are only individualized within those spaces. That is just a microcosm of a bigger situation. But just putting that out there. So Deleuze takes from the work of Paul Virilio, who just died a few years ago, I guess, three or four years ago, um, who characterizes these new forms of control as ultra rapid and free floating. So they happen at a much quicker pace and they happen everywhere, hence the free floating nature. But again, Foucault accounts for this. Like he's very clear that these forms of control for many centuries past, from the time of the, the, the plague, control was, I guess, dispersed everywhere. And one of the ways that he characterizes it as being cellular, like it is uh, everywhere. Capillary is another way that it is described. But anyways, this is how Deleuze is characterizing it as now being free floating and being um, ultra rapid. Now Deleuze is clear that he doesn't say that one form of control that is disciplinary or control, <laughs> like disciplinary society or control society is worse than the other as though one is more pernicious, one is more exact in its uh, administration of punishment against people. But he is just trying to describe it so that we can recognize some kind of a transformation, whether or not it's actually uh, a, a change in degree or whether it's a change in kind, doesn't really matter even if I have some problems with it. It is still nevertheless important to discuss. Even if it is just an extension of the same Foucauldian paradigm, at least we have to acknowledge that it is some change in degree, perhaps. And he wants us, to, he kind of dissuades us from just assuming a kind of like uh, the easy examples. Like for him, he says, we don't need to think about this in terms of like genetic engineering or genetic manipulations or molecular engineering, because he's like that that's low hanging fruit right there. We don't need to think about it in those terms because that that's also a pretty rare instance. We don't really need to think about that as being uh, indicative of an entire system, which as an aside, I, I have personally have a great number of problems with the field of posthumanism, but I think it would be all too reductive to kind of attach a posthuman uh, tone to this, particularly because posthumanism in a properly Derridian way only ever serves the end of reifying of bringing back to light the idea of the human in the first place by saying oh well we were once human uh, we must return to those roots because these new technologies are taking away what it means to be human and it's all that's a big trap and it's one that we all too easily fall into so he says that in in the old system the disciplinary system the enclosed systems were quite rigid whereas these new ones are variable they correspond to a kind of variable geometry in his words which it, Foucault accounted for this. Like he knew that prisons were always gonna be under reform. In fact, Foucault says that their demise would actually be curbed by their constant transformation, their constant development, their extension into new ways of living, their extension from the prison to the factory, to the administrative building and, and so on. But the way that Deleuze characterizes this or he expands on this further, is by looking at the distinction between the factory that was indicative of the old form, the disciplinary form, and how it is distinct from the corporation as being uh, evidence of a new form. Where he says that the, in the factory, workers were kind of homogenized. In, in Marxist terms, they were turned into abstract labor. That is, their specificities were written off, they were just given the lowest possible wage, and that was it. Whereas in the corporation, people are struggling with one another against one another for higher wages it's a kind of logic of merit will result in more pay and so what we see is a kind of fostering of a sort of sort of individuality that allows for flux and movement and change that was previously foreclosed to wage workers but one way that i i don't like this is if we think of the ways in which wage workers for a very long time would actually adapt themselves and change on an individual level to receive less wage. And one of the 
ways in which this is, uh, one of the places that this is demonstrated is in the film On the Waterfront with uh, Marlon Brando, where workers were fighting to earn less money if it meant they could work at all. So we see this kind of um, transformation occurring in the factory setting as a means of earning less. So it's not like just reserved for the corporation. Also, we can problematize this by saying that, yeah, if you look at a corporate headquarters in an urban setting where there isn't a factory, yeah, you could say that that's the case, but that makes up a very small portion of what is actually going on in factories all across the world. I mean, it seems quite myopic to say there's this huge transformation when it's a very small minority of the population that can actually you know, engage in these kinds of uh, battles for merit when th the products are still being made overseas by Bangladeshi and women for like no money, but we have to just ignore that apparently. So he continues by saying that in the corporate setting, training is never finished. And I think that there is some degree of uh, some truth to this and how they, they describe a transformation into perpetual training or how Deleuze describes a transformation from being trained to the emergence of perpetual training. And we see this in like, you know, um, continuing ed, in, in just like schooling, um, the need for like constant uh, bureaucratic like training sessions in, in corporate settings, which again, we're still working within a very narrow sense of what work is. That is, we're just dealing with like upper middle class white collar work here. But is it really all that new? I mean, doctors have always had to constantly be rejuvenating and renewing their practice to match knowledge, to match uh, changes in knowledge which correspond to various changes in power. And I'm really wanting to be generous with the Deleuze here, but I, it just, Foucault accounted for all of this and I just don't understand how this is new. But in, in any in any case, it, it is still an interesting concept that um, training is never ending. And that is meant to foster an endless cycle of um, dependency on the worker, on the new knowledge that is bestowed upon them by their peers, you know? And all of these training sessions are given by, by peers, right? There is a kind of crisis of knowledge in the, in the, in the society that uh, Deleuze is describing. And that, that might be a little bit, he doesn't really discuss that, but that might be a, a way, to, way by which to think the difference between Foucault and Deleuze, where in Foucault there are still experts, more or less. Whereas for Deleuze, it seems like the expertise has been completely diffused. It has been dissolved in the kind of firmament, in, in the kind of um, media ecology. This is why I think De, uh, Baudrillard is a better thinker for this, but in any case. And, he, and then he's something kind of weird. He's, he's like, people are organized not according to um, like a designating number or, or put on like a timetable, but they're orchest or organized via their own individuated codes, what, what, the, what he calls a password, which is strange. Um, and he gives the example of uh, that Guattari gives of like a society in which you have like a little uh, card that you use to get from place to place. And you use this little card, it has a barcode, uh, and you probably could log in with this card somewhere on the, the internet. I don't know if you wrote about it in, in that much detail, but you had access to your own like log, for, for example. But Deleuze says that you were always then susceptible to a kind of closing off of opportunities, like the internet or the overlords could essentially uh, block access for you to some place with your card. And I'm reading this and I'm like, but isn't that just saying that there is like a site of power in the old sovereign sense almost? Like you seem to be going further back than Foucault here. But anyways, he gives us uh, this idea of this kind of card, but Foucault also says in Discipline and Punish that people are organized by, a, in his words, a code, a kind of cellular code. And so I'm, I don't know what is like new about this, but anyways, that's, that's what we have, that's what we got. So let's think of it in terms of a pretty recent example, like with Uber, where the Uber worker is a kind of cybernetician almost. They are the kind of uh, control society subject that Deleuze is talking about. They're always plugged into uh, 
a GPS tracker. You know, they're always on their phone taking these orders from this device and they can go freely everywhere, but in accordance with this device that fosters that movement. Now, that's a good example of a situation we find ourselves in. But again, Foucault is very clear that that seems to be the trajectory of the system he's describing. Like, it is productive in the Foucaultian sense. There is free movement. There's a kind of individuality, but there's also a individuality. There is uh, the constant transformation of the person from their rigid individualism into newness. They're always subject to new knowledge, new power that transforms them in new ways. But of course, this is all, at least uh, in their own mind, of their own volition. Like they want this for themselves. So the Uber driver is this person that belongs to this control society, but it may very well also be the person who was uh, working in a factory, the extension of that very logic, in that they abide by these same kind of coded, regulated structures. And we know from like Uber, from, you know, if you watch any kind of documentary on it, that the people are highly regulated and the amount that they make is highly determined by not necessarily someone writing checks, but an algorithm, which is essentially the same thing with a kind of uh, heightened practice. It is the disciplinary society in its almost perfect form. Like it is taking it to its perfect form. It is crystallizing the perfect, the disciplinary society in a way that Foucault would obviously admonish, uh, but it, it's not like off the trajectory. It's not off of what was anticipated. So ultimately what um, Deleuze gives us that I think is super helpful is for us to recognize how the old disciplinary formations, and I'm being generous here and inserting my own interpretation, how the old mechanisms haven't gone away and how we must recognize how these new forms of power are extensions of the old one and are therefore quite pernicious, but that take on a new veneer. They're, they're different in, in degree and not so much in kind. Like if they are different in kind, it seems kind of superficial. So we have to be careful in saying that it's like a qualitatively new thing and instead look at the way in which it's an extension of the old ones but that they take a new form, they have a new mask on, and we must then recognize them in that, in that same way. We must recognize them in their uh, desire to make us feel as though we've entered a kind of um, perfectibility, a kind of ultra knowledge space, uh, one that is, um, you know, infallible. When in fact, all of these uh, assumptions are quite fragile. But in any case, I'd love to hear anyone who would like to characterize this text a little bit more if you're willing to give me a little bit more of an understanding of the differences between Foucault and Deleuze but to be as clear as possible I'm just not totally convinced that we can mark a qualitative change from disciplinary societies to control societies but in any case yeah take care